So as I was saying, the Biosavar law, because it depends on both the direction of the current as well as the direction of your displacement vector, it can get quite a bit more complicated really quickly, more so than the electric field case. So more likely we're going to rely on derived results than back when we were dealing with electric fields where we only have one vector to deal with within the differential element. And one such result which is quite important and comes up quite a bit is if you have a straight long wire, very very long wire, you will get that that's the case. Now we write it this way because we know that mu naught actually has 4 pi so we keep the 4 pi underneath to cancel things out or if you wait until once we do Ampere's law there's a different and almost quicker way to arrive at this particular result. In any case that is what we'll be using and the direction of the magnetic field is given either by the direction that's defined in the Beers of our law which involves the direction of the current and the displacement vector from your current source to your point or as a shorthand we can use the thumbs up method where we have the current going in the direction of my thumb and so the magnetic field must go around that wire in the circle as defined by my fingers. So once we have magnetic direction we work out what the contribution of each wire is and then we can add them up i.e. superposition. Breaking down into components of course and then add them up. Let's deal with these one at a time. We'll do the harder one first now that you're nice and fresh. B1. What do we know about B1? Well we know that the size of B1 because it is distance A away from my point P and they have the same current 4 pi instead of R is A. That's the distance from my wire to that point. And the direction that it is in we can use the cross product way so we go I cross R get to B so it'll be like that perpendicular there's my B or you can do the alternative shortcut right hand rule where it tells us it goes counterclockwise so at that point it must go up in, in the corner like that. So that's the direction so we have to break that down into X and Y component so we need this angle which is the same as that angle and to get that angle we can either do the arc sine of B over A or we can use a more similar triangle kind of approach so that we don't have to work with sine and cosine as much. So we can find out that bottom using Pythagoras. So we know that B1 must be the size of B1 in the negative direction in this case of sine theta in the i hat, oh bad me, we should be defining these directions here. And then we have a positive y component, so that's the magnitude of b1 cosine of theta in the j direction, where sine theta can be given as b over a, and cosine theta can be given as the square root over a, adjacent over hypotenuse. b2 is quite a bit simpler, same expression except r is now just b, in terms of direction, through whichever method you want, you should get that B2 is solely in the positive x direction. And so we go ahead and add them up. So the total B is equal to B1 plus B2, and therefore that's negative. There's a, quite a bit of common factors around here. So we collect the common factors and we'll even factor out that too, I guess. We're not really looking to evaluate these into actual numbers here. So all those are common and then we have B minus and then A squared underneath plus 1 over B in the I hat and then plus what is left behind here in the J hat. And that's our answer. So notice we are starting to deal with more questions and answer with purely symbolics just because we know you're more comfortable with these things now and it's great because once we do have specific numbers we just plug it in.